Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. As the drought continues its grip, there are serious concerns this week about what harvesting the damaged corn crop for silage or hay could mean for your livestock. We go to our extension forage specialist, Darren Redfern, for advice. Now, Darren, I understand this is uh, really a pretty serious situation. Can you explain to us what's going on? Uh, yes, uh, go back a, a few months uh, with the drought conditions we've had, you know, beginning in last fall and through the winter, uh, early spring and continuing through today, a lot of the pasture conditions have uh, deteriorated to the point that there's not a lot of available forage. Uh, even though we've had some rain scattered throughout Oklahoma the, the past few days, that's really not enough. We're, you know, we're still a long way from correcting uh, some of those situations uh, with, with pasture growth. Uh, the additional thing that's occurring um, is a lot of the corn crop has also uh, failed. And so what's happening is due to that lack of pasture growth, there's a lot of interest in using some of these failed corn crops as a forage. Okay, and your concerns then, normally this would be okay in a normal year, but as we know, this year is anything but normal. Exactly, and you know, in a normal year, uh, most of the corn is, is able to uh, survive and produce a crop on some of the rains we get in the spring through the early summer. Uh, this year, what's happened is, is a lot of the corn is under drought stress. Uh, it hasn't produced a grain crop, uh, so that lack of forage then is, is uh, making a, a lot of uh, producers uh, wanting to know what the possibilities are of using that as a forage. And so the issue then becomes is uh, nitrate toxicity uh, due to the high levels of nitrogen that are required to produce these grain crops. Uh, that nitrate is not mobilized uh, for plant growth, so it is still stored in the plant. And then what can happen? The, the levels can get really extreme and then there's a real danger Factor. Yeah, what, what we're seeing, uh, some of the levels that, that have been reported have been uh, up around 50,000. Uh, the normal level of, of toxicity uh, where we can start seeing some uh, livestock death occur is around 10,000 parts per million. Uh, so some of the reports then are the, that the nitrates are, are five times above what would be considered a, a severely toxic level. Now, do you recommend that someone, I guess, have their corn tested before they even think about feeding it to their uh, that, livestock? That's, that's the most important thing that they've got to do is, is they've got to have a uh, nitrate test conducted on it to know uh, if there is a problem, which we anticipate that, that there will be, and that's also going to indicate the severity of the problem. Uh, so how you manage that from a feeding standpoint is that if you know what the nitrate level is and then you're able to blend that with some forages in that don't contain uh, nitrates and then you can reduce the level that way. Now the issue with that is, as we've talked about, there's not really a lot of other choice. So a lot of those forages are going to have to be brought in from some outside areas. So they're also going to need to be tested as well. Now what do you recommend um, that people do with their corn that's still in the field? If they're not actually going to feed it to livestock and they're, what's the best option? Yeah, those uh, high levels that we talked about earlier, those that are up around 50,000 parts per million, uh, from an agronomic standpoint, those are probably best to be left in the field. Uh, three things that, that that's going to do, um, that's going to allow a reduction of, of soil erosion to occur because in effect, they're a cover crop. Okay, so reducing soil erosion, you're increasing moisture for the next crop. And then uh, most of that nitrogen that's in that plant is still going to be available for some of the subsequent cropping systems that, that are, are planted behind that. Okay, and then looking ahead, I mean, obviously we're in mid-July here, but looking ahead to August, there's gonna be potentially issues with sorghum as well, similar uh, to this? Yeah, we anticipate that, that some of these same issues with these drought stress corn are also going to occur with some of the some of the sorghum crops. So bottom line, have your crop sent to the lab, get it tested. Is it best to just contact your county educator uh, for that process? Yes, you're the extension educators in each county have a field test uh, that they can determine whether or not nitrates absent or present on a lot of these uh, drought stress crops. Uh, but to get a quantitative number that you can use uh, that's important to know for management, uh, those samples are going to be need to, to send in to the OSU Soil, Water, and Forage Analytical Laboratory on campus. Uh, the cost of that test is $6. Okay. 
money well spent, it sounds like. Exactly. Okay, Darren Redfern, thank you. And for more information on this issue and a link to the lab website, you can go to our SUNUP website at sunup.okstate.edu.